would just like to take a quick moment at the beginning of this video to clear the air on something that a lot of people, I think, are very much confused on. This idea of capitalism versus socialism. The mainstream media has done an absolutely spectacular job of shifting the definitions of these two words in order to push their own individual agendas. Capitalism is the idea that money is number one no matter what. There's no such thing as crony capitalism. There's no such thing as capitalism that doesn't involve the service of money or the service of the god mammon. Period. That's it. Capitalism is the idea that money is always the answer. Socialism is the idea that the state of society is the most important thing, regardless of money. Now, a lot of people think, well, one involves the free market and the other one doesn't. They both involve the free market. Case in point, who remembers when the U.S., back in 2013, 2014, sanctioned Venezuela? What would there have been to sanction if there hadn't been the free market? Nothing. So that proves the point. Now, I have some information from right here, right now, in North America, that proves that capitalism, not socialism, and believe it or not, not even really completely Joe Biden, is the reason you're going broke at the grocery store. This is an article from April 11, 2023, a year ago. Last year, now this article is referencing 2022, U.S. consumers saw the largest annual increase in food prices since the 80s. While food prices generally go up 2% a year, 2021 to 2022, they went up 11%. And in this article, they blame inflation and global disruptions, food supply chain, all that kind of stuff, and people bought it. Now, let's fast forward to May 2024. Grocery prices jump higher than officials say inflation could cause. And they go down and said, whether you're stocking up, things are still, or just fill in the pantry, you're spending more and more to get fewer things at the grocery store. Well, guess what? The Federal Trade Commission just figured out, look, profits from grocery chains jumped considerably more than supply chain and inflation issues could justify. Kroger, Walmart, Amazon, all the big ones are recording huge profits. Now, why? Why? Wait a minute. You see, what a lot of people believe about the free market is this, is that when things get too expensive, demand destruction will bring the price back down. Let me say that again. People believe that when things get too expensive, the demand destruction, because it's too expensive, will bring the price back down because people won't sell anything at the highest prices. There's a caveat to that, though. If people have to buy certain things to live, certain staples, they're going to have to buy them, no matter what. And now, there's a scapegoat. Every major food supplier and merchandise retailer right now absolutely loves Joe Biden. You know why? Because they can raise prices as much as they want to. And if anybody complains, all they have to do is say, oh, damn that Joe Biden. Damn that Joe, Joe Biden. Man, we're all just in this together. We're going to have to hunker down and kind of go shoulder to shoulder and hope we make it through. Well, you see, secretly, they hope he gets reelected. So they, they continue to raise prices way beyond the supply chain issues, way beyond the inflation issues so that they can record even more and more profits and you'll still come back and buy the same stuff over and over again. Why? Because of something called confirmation bias. This is one of the 24 cognitive biases and 24 logical fallacies that we talk about over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. 
when you already believe something like, oh, I hate Biden, Biden is terrible, Biden is horrible, it's easy to make him a scapegoat for every bad thing that happens, no matter what. Now, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. He's definitely not the same guy he was 30 years ago. <coughs> Pardon me. Not the same guy he was 30 years ago. But now, there's a game being played. All these businesses are running up these prices because they know they can blame him. Here's a good example of the confirmation bias from the, the strip, Delbert. Um, HR representative says, let me begin the meeting by... Uh, me letting you know that I'm aware that I'm going to be documenting all of your bullying behavior. And of course, Dilbert replies, I'm not even close to being a bully, but now your confirmation bias will make everything I say sound like bullying to you. And then she says, can you repeat the part after which you implied that I'm a delusional witch? Which she didn't do, but this is what happens when you have a scapegoat. And this is why things are going to continue to go up and up and up. Now, battlefield of the mind stuff. Confirmation bias is one of the classic things that people fall into. I'm not saying that Joe Biden has made all great decisions. He's made some whopper bad ones. But there's something going on now where people are taking advantage of this. And they're doing things to make you believe you can blame him for everything. And they are making a ton of money. I'll give you this article. Things are way more expensive than just inflation and Joe Biden. And they are now proving it. They're saying, look, all of these major chains, Amazon and Kroger's and Walmart, and they're making money hand over fist. They're making profits hand over fist because nobody's going to blame them. Now, if you'd like to get read in on more of these tactics, more of these PSYOP techniques, join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. It's only one U.S. dollar per month. It's even less if you sign up for an entire year and fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Can you imagine that deal at the grocery store? Can you imagine less than three pennies a day? You get something, kick the tires, Look at it. If it's for you, not for you, full refund after 90 days, no questions asked. Love to have you over there. Now, what's the real story when you hop in the helicopter and you kind of rise above it? What if Russia wins? This is something that a lot of people don't even want to talk about. <coughs> Pardon me. A lot of people don't want to talk about this. What if Russia would win in this issue with Ukraine? Russia would then control a quarter of the world's wheat supply. Now, there's a big difference between being a wheat producer, a wheat exporter, and a wheat importer. And that's, uh, there's a, an article out, uh, Financial Times, um, that if there were some type, any kind of a piece, any kind of a piece that uh, wasn't a full repudiation of Russian forces going back to Russia, any deal now is going to probably lose control of a great deal of that land, that land of Russia. They would control world food prices along with the Chinese. Now, think about that for one minute. You see, when the U.S. decided to tell all of its allies, hey, we want to break the government of Venezuela. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to institute these sanctions. None of our allies, nobody is, who is a U.S. ally, may sell food to Nicolas Maduro or Venezuela. It doesn't matter how many people are starving. We want them angry. We want them in the streets. We want them overthrowing their government. That's what we want to do. We want to create civil unrest. And it failed. But it was the idea of using food as a weapon of war. 
Well, guess who's going to do that now? Guess who's going to use food as a weapon of war? See, the U.S. produces a ton of wheat. But boy, I tell you what, those wheat producers, if they can get better prices for it overseas, now I'm sure a lot of people like Florida Maki. You are totally wrong. You are totally wrong. Nicolas Maduro, he was an evil dictator. I mean, look at that, the dark mustache. Didn't you watch Saturday morning cartoons? Everybody who had a dark mustache was automatically evil. Therefore, the you know, both sides told me how terrible he was. The, the Fox News told me he was terrible, and CNN told me he was terrible. So the fact that they were colluding on that didn't bother anybody, but we don't deal with people like that. We love freedom, you know, and we start, you know, singing the songs and all that kind of stuff. And then I bring up this, and everybody gets silent. Really? You want to put Nicolas Maduro, a Christian, on the same level as the prince of Saudi Arabia? As far as a violator of human rights? Hey, ladies. Hey, all the women out there in my audience. How many of you have thought, you know what? You know what would be fun this year, gals? Let's all get together. <clears throat> let's take a couple weeks away from the guys. And let's go visit Saudi Arabia. It's funny, nobody says a word about that. Nobody ever puts the two together that everything they say about Nicolas Maduro is actually true about the Prince of Saudi Arabia. But nobody thinks we should do anything about that. Now, let's get right down to the brass tacks of this. You see, you can't control drilling, shipping, storing, refining, buying, selling, trading, and taxing of oil, and then say you don't control oil prices. Now, I want you in your mind's eye to take out the word oil, <coughs> to take the word oil out of this and put in the word food. You can't control the planting, shipping, storing, refining, buying, selling, and trading, and taxing of food and then say you don't control food prices. And then say you're not socialist. The U.S. government controls food prices. Period. Through taxes and regulations and approvals, inspections, insurances. This all costs money. This all costs money and they decide who the winners and who the losers are. Now, Here's the best part. You ready? Ready to sit down? Do you know why it's like that? Your grandparents, possibly your great-grandparents. Maybe for some of you, great-great-grandparents. The parents of those people who fought World War II. The parents of those people who fought in World War II. Whoever was born around 1900 right around the Industrial Revolution. You see, for them, you see this this on the right, this little guy, they got stuck under the stamps where they say stamp out black markets with your ration stamps, pay no more than legal prices. You see, these are advertisements, not from Russia, not from China, but from here, during the war. You see, their definition of black market is what you believe the free market is. Let me say that again. Their definition of the black market would be what your definition now of the free market is. Meaning, put it out there and whatever price you can get from whoever, depending on how desperate they may or may not be, or whatever they're willing to pay. You see, that didn't work for the folks here in America who were born about 1900, who were about <clears throat> about 20 years old, about 20 years old during the Depression, 20 or 30 years old, and about 40 years old during World War II because they were the ones in charge. Yeah, the ones who went off to fight were, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, but the people who were in charge of the country 
at that time were 30 or 40 years old. These were the World War I generation people. See, you not only had to have the money to buy something, you also had to have a stamp. And there were point ration charts. And it didn't matter how much money you had. When you went into a store, if you didn't have your stamp, your ration for it, you couldn't get it. And sometimes you couldn't get all sorts of things whether you had a stamp or not. And that was this country. Now, how many of you have read Revelation 6.6? 6? I believe it was the third horseman, the one with the scales, the black horse, saying a quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. See, I think there's been a slight misinterpretation here. You see, what you're looking at here is a version of rationing. Meaning you can only spend a day's wages on food today. That's it. A lot of people think it was the price. Well, yeah, there's going to be rich people who are always going to have money and do not damage the oil and the wine. That's the bottom part. But these two standards, the quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, what that is doing is establishing a limit on what you can purchase at any one given time or in any one day. You see, China... China is top wheat producer in the world, 2022-2023. The EU right behind them. But guess what about China, though? China, let's see, this area here is the number one importer. This area, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, they're the number two. This area here is the number three importer of wheat. But China, being the number one, number one producer of wheat in the world, is the number four importer as well. That's how much they need. And look who's going to be angling to control the price. Where's the picture? Look who's going to be angling to control the price of wheat. And that will give him all he needs. With his ability and already having inroads made with India, with with uh, the, the oil now going to India, the massive amounts of oil coming from Russia to India, and now the, the alliance with China. Guys, I'm telling you right now, if you think things are bad, they're about to get a lot worse. Way worse, primarily because of greed. Which is the basis of capitalism. If you're not a greedy person, if you're not a greedy person, you are a terrible capitalist. You will get your clock cleaned. If you go try to go out and do any kind of a world full of capitalists who are okay being super greedy with no moral direction whatsoever, you will lose. You will lose every time. Socialism says it isn't all about you. And yeah, it could cost people some money. You might have, might not have Elon Musk's or Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos. But socialism says it isn't about you. So, that's where I stand on this. So, I will leave it there. Thank you, all of you who have already joined us at the Patreon channel, making a huge, huge difference over there. Got a brand new video next probably two to three days. We're going to get up, and it's going to be a much deeper dive into this because it's going to be related to something we've talked about that has made a few people kind of uh, upset. You know, the idea of doing anything you can to make money to keep your head above water. Is that the moral and right thing to do always? 
and I'll leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.